Welcome to the Alchemy of Ascension Season 4, Activating Awareness, Well-Being, Intimacy, and Self-Mastery. I'm your host, Washela Sananda, and today we have very special guest, Sydney Campos. Welcome, Sydney. Hi, thank you. So happy to have you here. So before we dive in, I would love to invite everyone to join us on a short meditation so we can just really get present and ready to receive. So let's begin by closing our eyes, tuning into the breath, and deepening the breath into the belly. And as you're breathing, inform each breath through the light of the heart. And now get present to the heart center and the light inside your heart. And as you're feeling in to that heart light, feel it expanding out around your heart and out around your chest. And just feel that heart energy informing your entire body. And now bringing the awareness of the heart light up through the top of your head, extending all the way up to central sun, far above your head. And feel into the heart center of central sun. Feel the warming divine light energy of central sun in the heart center, the divine masculine, and bring that energy down through the ethers into the crown of your head, into your heart center, and all the way down the spine, and then continuing down, down into the center of the earth, making contact with the light in the heart in the center of the earth. This is the heart light of divine mother, of mother Gaia, of the earth energy. So feel that divine feminine frequency, heart energy now moving up through the layers of the earth, like roots up, moving up through the roots, liquid crystal plasmic creative energy, moving up into your body, up into your spine all the way up the spine and into your heart center. And now feel that trinity of light in the heart from above, from below and within, expanding and enhancing your heart light so that you may be fully present and anchored in the body to receive whatever is in this conversation for your highest good being open and focused and joyfully present. And with that, go ahead and bring your awareness back. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Okay, thank you for doing that with me. I feel more grounded and present, <laughs> a little more focused. And now I get to introduce Sydney by, I'm going to read a little bit about Sydney so everyone can understand who you are and what you're up to in the world. Mm -hmm. Sydney Campos is a visionary, intuitive advisor, business strategy expert, and best selling author of the empath experience, what to do when you feel everything. Mm -hmm. She is the co-founder and chief strategy officer of Ascend and host of the acclaimed Visionary Souls podcast. Sydney is devoted to creating heaven on earth in all moments, whether leading marketing strategy for conscious companies, hosting transformational retreats, building soul aligned businesses, training Akashic facilitators, or architecting the world's next social community, Sydney illuminates bridges into new dimensions. I love that. Wow. Welcome. And Let's start at the beginning. How, how did you, it's kind of like origin story since this is the first time you've been on the show. How did you come to do this amazing work and so many different types of work? Did you have an awakening experience 
were you born this way? How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's so wonderful to be here. It's it's so fun to hear that that story, the bio story. It's so different. It changes. You know, we, we're just changing so fast every day now. Um, it's like we can't keep keep up with our biographies. <laughs> um, you know, I was born really sensitive and intuitive and just like kind of this multidimensional being that got plopped into earth. And I think at a really young age, uh, knowing what I know now, I didn't know that now uh, back then, of course, but knowing what I know now, you know, kind of got plopped here on earth and felt like, what am I doing here? And who are these people, you know, to and looking at my immediate family? really feeling um, out of place, <laughs> mm -hmm. as I'm sure many people listening uh, can relate to that experience and, and just feeling like I'm in the wrong place. Can I please go home now? <laughs> and, um, you know, so I learned a lot of lessons quite young. Um, I uh, got into drugs and alcohol pretty young, about 14 years old. I started uh, partying pretty hard and, and seeking kind of outside things to shut off my sensitivity and, and also just kind of get me down to a level where I could just be a human. That's what it felt like to turn off all my sensitivity and just be able to breathe. Uh, prior to that, I felt like paralyzing anxiety as a pretty normal state and felt on top of that, like there's something wrong with me or I'm crazy because everyone else around me seems to have it together. You know, what was I missing? And um, had no idea, had no language to describe what I was experiencing. Uh, did that for about 10 years, kind of was really good at playing the role of uh, looking like I had it all together, um, did really well in school, so I guess my parents didn't really, uh, weren't so concerned, you know, with me, and um, yeah, was was getting into a lot of dangerous situations at a very young age, getting into a lot of trouble, but always hiding it. And uh, I hit a rock bottom with the, the drinking and the drugs at age 24. So I did that for about 10 years. And it was in New York City. And I, uh, you know, just had no boyfriends anymore to be babysitting me, which had been like the last few years. I was really on my own and it was really scary. I was putting myself in a lot of danger. I was exploring uh, escorting and stripping at that time and just leading a total double life. I was working in a like financial advising office by day at night probably sleeping like five hours in between these two, you know, uh, jobs. I would go to the strip club at night and get so blacked out. And like, I was a terrible stripper. I'd lose all my money. Like I would just be so drunk and uh, get into really dangerous situations and would often wake up and not be sure how I got home, you know, many times. So I'm really grateful that I'm alive. I think there were a lot of times back then through that experience that I tried to, tried to kill myself without consciously committing suicide. Uh, I feel like I really uh, was not here. I feel like I was at a, a space where I just didn't really want to be here and let a lot of other entities kind of run me. That's what it feels like. Um, and then I, yeah, I hit a rock bottom with that and just realized that I was going to die for sure if I kept uh, operating the way that I was. And, and just by, you know, total grace, um, kind of seeing the look in someone else's eyes, really. I was in a therapy appointment. Um, thinking I was gonna get career counseling, you know, like if I could just find the right job, then I could feel like I'm living my purpose and then I wouldn't have to party and like do all this stuff that I'm ashamed of all the time, you know, then I could be happy. Uh, I was really externally focused. And, um, and I finally told this therapist who was about to prescribe me with a lot of, uh, let's say anti-anxiety, probably like medication. I was like, wait a minute, I don't think I could drink with that. Let me tell you what I'm actually, you know, doing here. And I told her the truth about what I was up to and what was probably creating these um, diagnoses of, you know, bipolar uh, disorder type, you know, diagnosis. And she's the look on her face when I told her what I was actually doing, the amount I was drinking, the drugs I was doing, the situations I was involved in all in secret that nobody knew about. First time I had ever told anybody the truth. Uh, she just looked totally shocked. And the look on her face, uh, really shifted something in me. It, it freaked me out. It's like I saw the truth of what I was doing through her face. And uh, yeah, and I got sober shortly thereafter. I got sober through uh, the 12 steps. That was a big part of my life, the first couple of years of recovery. And that really catalyzed my awakening. Did a lot of work in that community, a lot of meditation, a lot of 
lot of work, found Reiki very early on in my recovery. Even after getting sober, I still felt crazy. <laughs> I still felt like you know, I was so overwhelmed by my emotions. I had no idea about energy, my emotions being highly, highly empathic, living in New York City, being totally fried energetically. And so I found energy healing and it changed my life. And I learned about being an empath and that changed my life and, and so on and so forth. And, you know, and kind of the rest is history, but that's really the beginning stage. It was quite, um, I don't really, I, it's hard to even talk about sometimes as I'm like, I don't even remember. I don't know if you have this experience. Like the longer I go in this path into more presence, into more embodiment, into more wholeness, you know, which is the infinite path. It's like, wow, that timeline, that experience, that being that was making those choices uh, just feels so foreign, you know, feels like, wow, I really it's a totally different dimension of experience, you know? <laughs> wow. Thank you for sharing so vulnerably all mm -hmm. of what led you here. And that must've been, um, you know, pretty traumatic to, to be amidst that experience of life. And um, what an amazing thing that you found, you know, just your recovery through someone else reflecting back what they saw. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, I know what you mean by, you know, when you, when you make such a big shift and then go forward into a whole different experience of life, it seems like another lifetime, literally. And, and I guess it is, it's a different timeline, different dimension of mm -hmm. who you were, but nevertheless, you know, we go through our traumas and challenges and that's what makes us who we are now. So it's all for a purpose. And also I imagine it gave you great compassion for people in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every single thing I've, I feel like I've lived a billion lifetimes in just this one. I mean, I just telling you that story is like just one layer of all of the experience. It's immense. And every single thing that we all go through. I mean, being human is traumatizing. Being born into a physical body as a multidimensional being is traumatizing, like all of it, you know? And every experience that we have uh, to, that catalyzes our awakening, it, it informs what we're here to do. You know, it informs our divine assignment, our mission. And every experience I've ever had, I mean, it, I'm so grateful because like, you can tell me anything. And like, people feel so safe um, I create a space of a lot of safety and acceptance. And, and this is really, you know, I think the definition of healing, right? Like I'm not healing anybody. I'm just able to hold a, a container and a space where people feel welcomed and available and vulnerable to really let go of all the stuff that we hold onto and feel so much shame about and harbor so much density around, you know, cause you can tell me anything. And I'm like, I've done that and I've done way worse, you know, and it's okay. And what if there's nothing wrong, you know? And what if it's all okay? And what if you can stop beating yourself up? And what if you can forgive yourself? Mm -hmm. And what if you can start over, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that, you know, that self-worth, self-love piece for so many people, I feel like that's why we're striving in this culture to, we're just people striving for success, for recognition, for acknowledgement. It's really for love, but ultimately it's for self-love and that self-love being reflected back through the eyes of others rather than cultivating it from the inside out and, and being it, right? The, yeah. being the embodiment of it. Yeah, I noticed you actually in some of your materials, or maybe it was on your site, I, I saw the phrase embodied ascension, which I received a, a while ago, like kind of in a, um, a meditation space, or I was doing a reading for someone, and I'm like, wow, this term is so powerful, like, what's that about, and, and, and that's why we're here, like embodied ascension, you know, my whole life of the, the timeline of the suffering, and the seeking, and the addiction, and the just that whole patterning, you know, up until that, well, there's still subtle layers of that present that we get to work on, right? It's not like it's all done and cleaned up and perfect. Um, but the, the intensity of that patterning, like, you know, wow, like that was just that, that loop that so many of us are conditioned to play in, that out seeking the outside, 
seeking the love outside, the success outside, the money, whatever we think it is, right, to fill uh, this, this void or this feeling of not enoughness or whatever it is. And I'm really loving this, um, this invitation into embodied ascension. In fact, that was the name of our retreat that we just had in Maui a couple months ago. Feels like lifetimes ago. And the invitation in that uh, practice of embodied ascension is to literally reverse engineer all of the external seeking and actually dropping just doing altogether. You know, it's like, what is it like to practice being truly present with yourself? Like dropping all the stories of, of even like, I have to do something to practice self-love and to learn. And I, there's somewhere to get to. And once I learn self-love, then I can be happy. And all of the conditional like mental frames that we're taught to operate in, letting all of that go and practicing like we did at the beginning of this call, presence, being in the breath, being in the heart really being in the body. So many of us, I know from most of my, you know, first part of my life, I was just up here operating in like the top part of my, my head, you know, the upper chakras, really not in the body. And a lot of us, I'm sure a lot listening to this, um, you know, call right now, it's like a lot of us who are highly in tune, sensitive, aware, psychic beings that come from higher dimensions, you know, that come into earth to, you know, to help assist in the ascension, it can be very common for us very early on, because it is so traumatizing coming into a body to disassociate and to not even know it, to become so good at playing the role of like, I'm happy and I'm here and I'm just pleasing everybody and, you know, fitting into my family and being a little angel, but really like we're not here. Like our spirit is not in the body because it has never felt safe to be in the body, you know? Mm -hmm. And then this is what I'm finding over the last um, year, for me, like really focusing on this, like the most important part of the embodiment path is like, wow, like really checking in on the level of disassociation that can be happening still to protect, to feel safe, to survive, and consciously coming into presence and inviting more presence deeper and deeper into the body, which is an infinite journey. But I'm just finding this to be like the most exciting, expansive you know, practice that, that we have. Ooh, I just, I love this conversation. And mm. <laughs> as you're speaking, I'm like seeing little sparkles around you and like, oh yes, you're, and you're so speaking my language and the language I feel like of so many that are in mm. this work. Um, I actually found you when I had, okay. So I had rebranded from, um, being an Ascension, uh, like Ascension training is the name of my, of my training to embodied Ascension training. So I, I'm like, I wonder who else is, is even <laughs> using that terminology out there. That's how I found you searching embodied Ascension. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. Well, it was yeah. we're on the team, right? It was cause that came in through a higher guidance. Like this is the name yeah. of that retreat container. It's a name for your training container. This is, this is 5D, you know, and, and all the dimensions beyond and everything we have access to is like from presence as this embodiment, as this portal, you know, of heaven into earth through this body, through our embodiment, we have access to infinite, infinite support, infinite intelligence, infinite integration, you know, wholeness. And this is really our collective invitation right now to really get curious about like, what is this? what is embodiment really about for every, you know, we use the term all the time. It's like popularized and trendy and cool. And everyone's like an embodiment coach. <laughs> and what does it mean? And what does it mean for you? Like, I love to invite people to like make your own definition, you know, create the meaning that resonates for you if, if it's useful, you know, and really like cultivate an understanding of like, what does it mean to be embodied? How does that really feel? How might that be something I am called to explore on my path right now? Absolutely. And you know what I was finding, um, having people come into my Ascension container, Ascension training, people have, I'm sure you're familiar with this perception mm -hmm. of Ascension as being out here or up there. And so, you know, it's my first training as Ascension is in, it's getting, it's ascending from 
in, you know, and, and bringing the frequency of this container, this body that we have for such a short time here on the planet, like using this tool, this tool and getting in it and working through it and with it is sending that way, not like getting out. And there <laughs> is when, when you're a star seed, like you and I, and so many of the viewers and empathic, it's so much to feel. It's so much intensity and so much to process to be in really in this container, especially with the people around us, not seeming to understand, you know, who we are and our sensitivities, like it's easier to go out. And I think it becomes a habit just not to be present, not to be embodied, not to be here now to, and even to desire to get out. You know, I hear a lot of people say, I just, I just don't want to be here. It's too hard. It's too, however, and I'm, I'd love to get your perspective on this. You know, once you really actually do get in and do start to like bring up the frequency of the body, it can be such a lovely, pleasant, enjoyable, physical, like the presence and the beingness of being human on this planet completely shifts when you do get in. But there's also the having to let go of the stuff that's in the way of that, right? The traumas and the, the dense stuff. I'm sure you had a lot of that to go through after all of your experiences. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's hard. It's hard being human and feeling and being all the way here. It's terrifying. You know what's terrifying? Uh, people are scared of their power. Our whole society, culture, all of it, especially Western culture is like so indoctrinated with just repression, oppression, shame, fear, control, addiction. You know, we're all conditioned to be addicts from day one, basically. And that's just the truth. And you know, a lot of, uh, it's easy, it's easy. There's so many traps. Look at the way our whole system's designed. Look at the way we grow up, you know, marketing, capitalism, all of it. It's like, we're taught from day one that we are not enough <laughs> and, and that we need something else to be better, to look better, to, you know, whatever it is. And we're not enough. And, and not only that, a lot of us learned as the bright, shiny, amazing beings that we are, to shut that down because, you know, usually at a young age, you know, when we told the truth, because we have a very clear barometer for right and wrong and true, you know, true resonance, <laughs> we could feel it but between people's words, between our parents' words, we could, we could feel the dishonesty, the inauthenticity, the fear. And usually at a young age, without all the conditioning present, we would just call people out. I know I did this, like, that's not true. That's not right. Or you're lying you know, and just being honest. And then we learned, you know, that that wasn't going to work because that threatened, you know, our survival in the family. If we're going to like be ourselves and speak our truth, that freaks people out who we have to depend on to take care of us. So we learn sometimes age one, two, three, this is already happening. And we shut down our power. We shut down our gifts. You know, we shut down our authenticity to fit in, to be, to survive, you know. And then, you know, eventually we wake up and we do the work and, and then this patterning is here. And it's like, why, why is it so hard to just be in my power? Why is it so hard to feel fully alive? Why is it so hard to feel worthy, you know, as I am of love, to be love, all these things, you know, such universal wounds, by the way, people have some, we're taught to have so much shame about the things that are like wrong with us or the ways we're broken when, Honestly, we have so much in common. We all share a lot of the same wounding, you know, like I'm just not surprised really anymore. Like the worst traumas I've experienced and heard from other people, the story of it might be different, but the underlying emotional like wounding, they're universal. These are universal threads that bond us all together as humans. And in a way it's really beautiful because once we come out of the hiding and the repression and the like, I have to just pretend to have everything together. Like the world teaches me, you know, to look good. And that whole broken pattern, you know, once we let all that go and we actually start sharing authentically from presence, like, you know, wow, this is what's coming up for me right now. This is what I'm afraid of. This is what I'm feeling. This is my experience, not caretaking, not projecting, just being honest, being real. Which can be terrifying, right? That's us being in our power, being real, being seen, 
you know, and then we can start to let things move out of our system. We can start to feel more safe in the body. We can start to open up for more connection and intimacy, you know, like real connections that we're all starving for, right? Like our society, our family systems don't really teach us how to cultivate true connection. And yet we're all expected to just have fairy tale romances and love and all of this, you know, and it's like, but how? It's like the most common concern I find out there in the world is like, how do I actually connect? How do I connect with myself? How do I listen to my intuition? How do I actually connect in with my own heart, with my soul, let alone with somebody else in a way that feels real, that's not superficial and like a simulation, you know? So this is really the work. And it starts with being vulnerable. It starts with really coming into presence with yourself in a way that at first can feel really tender, like really connecting in with yourself. Sometimes it can feel like for me, when I first experienced that, um, I needed a lot of support. It was terrifying to really come into these vulnerable spaces. Um, I was really, I had a lot of fear of facing some of the emotions and energy I had been repressing can feel overwhelming. You know, I didn't have a nervous system built that was able to sustain the level of energy and frequency that I'm designed to bring in. And it was really scary, scared of my power. You know, and I'm so grateful for the support, you know, that we get to call in. And that's really the most amazing way that we can take care of ourselves, I would say, on this path, no matter what part of the path we're on, is to always be humble enough to ask for support ask for help, you know, to have guidance. Like we're not alone. We don't have to figure anything out. We definitely don't need to figure anything out alone. <laughs> yes. A big yes to that. That is one of the, or if not the biggest reason that I do this work, the summits yeah. and the reaching out to the masses to connect because I felt alone. You know, I was raised in rural Iowa, um, Lutheran, you know, good Christian, traditional family values type of communities, you know, it was a lovely upbringing. And I always felt really strange, like, <laughs> who are these people? And why don't they see the stuff I see? And why, you know, what are they talking about? And, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I felt alone in my, in my experiences. So just to, I, I, you know, I craved, I didn't understand what it was that I needed, but I craved spiritual mm -hmm. companionship. And um, in the way that I was experiencing it, someone to tell me I wasn't crazy, you know, I wasn't the only one. Um, and I think that's, it's just community and support so important. And you know, I've said many times, I always have a coach, usually multiple coaches mm -hmm. for all the things that I'm up to in my life and shamanic support. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't want to be without that type of support. And I'm not, I don't have, we don't have to do it alone, right? We don't have to do it alone. So thank you for presencing that. Um, mm -hmm. One of the conversations that I really want to get into with you, uh, you talk about a, a lot about creating heaven on earth and how that's so much of what you're about. And I want to see if we can tie that into the new earth conversation. What, um, what is your perspective of the new earth and maybe what's happening right now on the planet is that part of the new earth and is that is that part of the bridge to creating heaven on earth so i know i'm opening up a huge um portal love here i love this <laughs> portal that's, that's <laughs> what i want to talk about <laughs> awesome thank you i love the big questions yeah ah just tuning in feeling some great energy moving through around this <sighs> You know, I was given that term. Sometimes I'm like given the preview of visions like years before I'm ready to actually really understand them or the understanding deepens and unfolding over many years and experiences. And the heaven on earth thing and 5D visionary, you know, that term came in like years ago and I incorporated it into different offerings. And, but there was looking back, there was a part of me, I didn't know it at the time, but looking back again, I'm like, I didn't really, I was just kind of trying these things on. Like I would, spirit would give me these containers and I'm like, hey, what is this about? What is teaching, you know, learning, sharing? And what does this actually mean? And, and what I've gotten about the heaven on earth uh, container concept invitation is 
it's embodied ascension. <laughs> there is also this um, conditioning very much in the communities of, you know, the new earth and regenerative communities and all the terms, you know, and um, of like create it. Yes, of course, we're here to create something. Of course, we're here to actualize our gifts. Of course, we're here to birth amazing visions into being, right? We're architects. We're here to architect the new realities that we wish existed. And yet, especially as we're moving into, you know, 5D and, and more, which really to me just means presence, right? Out of time and presence, authenticity, complete integrity, you know, really being ourselves, really living in our creativity and our full creative potential. Architecting heaven on earth means I commit fully to embodying my divinity. I commit fully to embodying my true self. I commit to being present. And only from that space am I creating what is aligned with my divinity to create. And the creation isn't so much a, like intellectual, you know, following a map, linear creational time frame. It's more, it's a totally different way of creating, which I'm sure you're experiencing too. This is something I've been teaching for years, but I'm now like getting at a deeper level, like, oh, Creating from presence is like a completely different experience. And we do collapse time and space and we do quantum leap and we do like have these immense activations of energy that come in and we just take one really efficient step towards architecting the vision that's meant to be created. And we magnetize the resources and support and the right people. And we're just at the right moment and the right time and the right place and we notice that we're a part of this much larger plan <laughs> that's already orchestrated, that in a way has already happened. You know, it's like already done. We wouldn't have the vision unless it's already occurred on some level, on the quantum level. And, and then we get this experience of almost like watching ourselves, like move through the story, move through the play. And it kind of is this surreal, you know, this experience of watching, like watching the show. <laughs> but we're the player in the show and it really is this holographic experience, but we're present and it's real, you know? And it's funny to even give words to it sometimes because it's like when we're in such presence and so like enthralled with our creativity, we're not really talking or thinking, we're just being in the moment and enjoying it. And that like, that's what we're here for. That's what I came here for, to be so in the moment, like to be lost in the moment and just so connected into creation and with God and, just in all the dimensions that we span and more of our energy coming through embodying, like that's what I'm here for, you know? And it's a practice, it's a practice to create from that space. And then the story of the new earth and, you know, I don't really, I don't really use that term. Actually, it doesn't even come through so much. Like I do a lot of different facilitation and energy healing and, and readings with a lot of uh, people that are visionaries who are bringing through feature technology and new systems and infrastructure that you know are going to help sustain this planet for the next couple of thousand years, thousand years and beyond, right? And um, I've, I never hear the term New Earth in terms of how my guides or my councils can you know communicate. Um, my understanding of that term. Okay, well, what I'm seeing as we kind of explore it is just the fact that there's actually multiple dimensions of earth, right? And they appear as a grid, they appear as an energy field. And that earth is already like a fifth dimensional being and above, right? It's already like a much higher dimensional ascended being. <laughs> in fact, earth in many ways is holding the frequency that we are practicing, attuning to, right? And so uh, that would be kind of my closest uh, understanding definition of like the new earth is that earth is really providing us this whole spectrum of higher dimensional energy that she already holds in these different grids and consciousness grids overlaying each other very high high frequencies we have access to now it's really exciting and we're practicing we're practicing attuning with those energies seeing what we can integrate seeing what we can anchor in through our bodies into not only earth but you know also radiating out into the other systems that many of us are uh, ambassadors of, right, that we're connecting in with other planets, other universes, other consciousness, you know, beyond uh, realms that we even have words for, 
So there's a lot of other assignments happening here beyond what we're creating in the physical. Many of us, this is coming through for some reason to assure, affirm some listening, that many of us are here to really just anchor new frequencies on the planet. You know, our society doesn't like pay us for that or give us necessarily like affirmation or accolades for that, but it's, it's some of the most important work, you know, to bring through some of these higher dimensional energies and new consciousness into the planet. You know, we are holding a template, a pillar that just like earth is letting us attune to these higher dimensional energies, our systems, when we integrate these energies through our beings, when we embody, right, we're like, you know, allowing that energy to be available to more people. And they might not even be aware of it. They might not, it's not necessarily conscious, but that might be a large part of, of a lot of people listening here. Uh, it's a part of our assignment. It's a part of why we came in. It's a part of why sometimes we do feel very alone because we are carrying such different frequencies that not a lot of people resonate with yet. You know, it's like, it'd be a very big discrepancy in where we're kind of vibrating and where um, most people around us are. But oftentimes we're dropped into places geographically to be that light, to be that frequency holder, to broadcast it out so that we're helping everyone attune and, um, and expand. So that kind of went a lot of different directions. <laughs> yeah. I love it. You know, it's, we're so in the same field, you know, I guess when, when you're practicing embodied ascension, that's what it, that's what it looks and sounds like. And mm -hmm. that's something that I share about a lot as well, that your service might be your biggest service here might be the frequency that you hold. And when you step into your embodied ascension or your embodiment of your divine frequencies, sometimes your biggest service is just to be, it's just to hold that frequency and anchor that light. And that is a great service. And so doing your personal work, doing the work like you did to, you know, you weren't in that frequency when you were pre 24 right <laughs> um but then you made a choice yeah, that was yeah <laughs> and same yeah. just like me you know just like me i had mm -hmm. i had my my uh party times too when i was younger mm -hmm. similar story not mine wasn't quite as extreme but you know i did i did mm -hmm. play pretty hard um and it was having for me having my daughter that brought me back in and and also meeting um the shaman that that guided me so I'm grateful for that, but similar, you know, and to anchor a frequency to anchor and first we have to do our inner work and get in and get cleared out, clear out the trauma enough to even feel what we're feeling. And, you know, I love you shared about when you wrote a book about being an empath and feeling so much, like, how can mm -hmm. you be in this body when you feel so much? It can, it's, it can be like so much input, so much to feel. Um, but yet when I, I think everything that we're given um, from the outside in is like to escape to get out, to not feel that here, take this, even if it's just an aspirin or a, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. take this, take this, take this to help you not have to feel, have a drink. So you don't have to feel, you know, try this. So you don't have to feel, um, you know, and that could spin off into a million different things that we do watch a movie. So you don't have to feel, you know, whatever it is and all, mm -hmm. all our different vices, legal, illegal, it's, it's to get away from that feeling, but yet what happens when we feel it is that we actually get to be present. And that's, that's the whole, the whole world that you're speaking of and that embodiment is about, and really the key, the key to having it all work and actually desiring to be here. It's quite a game we chose to come in and play, right? It's like, it's, it's sometimes I just laugh, like, okay, yep, come back into presence. What's happening now? What am I feeling now? Come back, come back. You know, our whole world is designed to get us out of this moment and just come back, just come back. I forgive myself, come back, you know? And um, the other thing I just wanted to mention when you're talking about holding the frequency and like what if the most important part of your role on earth in this incarnation is to like bring in these frequencies and, and have fun and like do what you love. People get so wrapped up in like, what is my purpose? And you know, a lot of my um, 
business coaching consulting practice as it started was like about soul alignment and helping people find their purpose and you know using the akashic records to support people and and tapping in with that more and and but even that whole you know attachment of like i have to be living my purpose like it's this neatly tied up you know identity that we can just find and like be doing that and it all makes so much sense and it's so clear you know is something that we get to kind of break apart honestly you know again from the space of presence like what am i feeling and what is it that is inspiring me what is it that is enlivening what is it that i love what would i love to experience right now what would be fun <laughs> play and having fun is actually like one of the greatest keys into presence into embodied ascension is through play right laughter is one of the most powerful trauma release techniques that we have to literally like somatically process density through the body you know when we're like laughing so hard it hurts and uh, i just felt like that was important to remind like you know take the pressure off you know i have to find so many of us like really old souls right like even as little kids we like put so much pressure on ourselves like i have to be on my mission i have to live my purpose like we know we have a big purpose but we're like you know when i was 20 years old even when i was still in my addiction i'm like you know had this like existential crisis like i'm not living my purpose <laughs> like i couldn't live my purpose because i wasn't really here but there was that that energy that was driving so much pressure and constriction, you know, and it's like, wow, like what if your purpose is to really be yourself, to be present and to do what it is that you really enjoy. And could you imagine that whatever that is that you truly love is gonna help people. And you just being in your home frequency and radiating that joy is helping people. It's helping the planet, is helping assist ascension. Yes, absolutely, I love that. Um, you know, you mentioned some of the things that you do and you do a lot of different things from what I've seen, Akashic records, um, retreats, business coaching, writing, you know, authoring a book. So with all of that, you know, what is, what is your, like, what is your favorite, most fun, juicy thing to do <laughs> podcasting to? Yeah, I'm starting a social media company that's launching in a few a few weeks actually called Ascend, which is awesome. Uh, kind of pivoting my focus to really run that actually in the next month. Um, I love to dance. I love dancing. I love ecstatic dance and embodied movement. And that has just been such a big part of my embodiment process, you know, like started years ago when I was living in Bali and really got into ecstatic dance, but I was still, even having done so much work, I was still it was so vulnerable to be on the dance floor with all these like beautiful people. And, you know, and I was so self-conscious and all my empath stuff was there. Like, what are people thinking about me? I feel like everyone's looking at me and I can't just do what I want to do and I have to look good. And, you know, dance is such an awesome container to explore all these things, all these subtle energetic structures that we play in unknowingly and bring them into awareness and choose to move like ourselves. You know, wow, like that has been such an awesome journey. And I just love dancing. I love dancing with other people for that reason, because it just brings up all the triggers and awesome stuff to work on. And uh, yeah, that's like my favorite thing to do. I love singing, big activation over the last couple years since doing so much of the somatic um you know integration work and trauma release stuff and just like this new voice light language toning like all kinds of new uh, modalities for energy healing too and just for fun like loving to sing loving my voice realizing that we all have beautiful voices every single person on earth i think we're here to just sing and dance honestly <laughs> Yes, yes. I love ecstatic dance too. And um, I was in with my ex-husband, we were in the community in Austin, Texas. They have such great um, ecstatic dance community there. And then we moved back to Iowa for a period of time. And there was, of course, there was none there. So we facilitated it for a while. Yeah. And, you know, like we would have like six people show up because it's a small community. Going, awesome. to, so going from like a hundred to six was really confronting. You know, it's like, like you said, like 
it's ecstatic dance. It's free. It's, you can do whatever you want, but yet you're being, you're, mm -hmm. you're being with people you're moving in your own way. And it's bringing up the stuff it's, it's, there's nothing like it for anyone listening, watching that hasn't tried ecstatic dance. It's so powerful. It's so wonderful. Find ecstatic dance near you. <laughs> yeah, or start it up. Yeah, we, yes. honestly, I feel like it's the most incredible um, opportunity, you know, to, to practice embodied ascension is through the dance and through with it, with other people, with other mirrors, you know, because that's where we see, that's where we can really see ourselves and we can feel those little inconsistencies and triggers and contractions and we can work with them in the moment and just move so much. And so I've had so many awesome emotional releases on the dance floor and just, gosh, we can just access, you know, so much of ourselves and it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like deep movement meditation that with other people and then like the eye contact and the, mm -hmm. <laughs> It's like how much eye contact do I want to have with that person? Yeah, how much intimacy do I have capacity right. for? Right, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, mm -hmm. I miss it. We we have a wonderful one here, but um, it's been shut down for for some time. So I'm looking Come over to Big to Island, the home of ecstatic dance. I'm moving yes. over there in a couple of weeks, and yeah. it's an amazing dance community. And excited about it. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Um, we are moving to the end, to, close to the end of our time. together. <laughs> we are moving. Um, and I want to make sure we talk about um, your, your gift and your offer. So you, you have this wonderful free gift that you're, you're giving to everyone. It's an activation retreat. Would you like to share about what that is? Is it the somatic sanctuary? It's uh, what I wrote down <laughs> is activation retreat, healing guidance, Akashic transmissions, personalized coaching and consulting and insight into the principles and protocols of 5D business. Oh, and cool. It's the visionary vortex immersion. That's right. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I didn't write yeah. the title. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. For, so for this uh, container, this amazing summit, I mean, I have a lot of different offerings and, and ways of support, but it, it, I got the message to offer um, guidance on visionary business. You know, we spoke a little bit through this conversation around purpose, soul alignment, embodiment, and birthing the vision that you're here to bring through in this life. And um, so part of the free offering that I'm really excited for everyone to tune into is an immersive retreat that we did over the equinox. Um, so it's really powerful energy encoded in there. And it's a whole full spectrum journey of tuning into your vision, tuning into your soul purpose. Uh, there's like a nervous system attunement practice there as well to come into more presence, to connect in with your embodiment. And, and then there's a lot of support and this feeling of kind of being in a group container um, of fellow visionaries that are committed to creating heaven on earth, that are all creating different uh, organizations or courses or offerings. And it, it just feels uh, like beautiful energy to be immersed in, especially at this time, as we're kind of moving towards the end of this year. And, you know, wow, what a great time to really anchor in your vision. And then um, kind of piggybacking off of that, my uh, paid offer is 5D Visionary Business Training, which is like my, you know, most robust offering of basically a mentorship with me. It's a self-guided uh, mentorship and it contains years of <laughs> guidance and sessions and strategy and templates from different group containers and one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching, you know, uh, containers that I've had over the years. And if you resonate with what you experience in the vortex, visionary vortex, then this would be the next step is to go really deep and actually architecting, you know, what it is that you're here to birth. And I take you through a whole process of actually outlining, you know, what is the vision to create it from an authentic embodied place, not what you think you should be doing, not the thing that you think, you know, is going to make sense or that's going to make, you know, none of that. Like, what does your heart want to birth through you? And let's put a structure to that. And let's also develop a way that you can lead from an embodied present way in your own pace, right? And 
um, really creating your own rhythm in your business. And then there's all kinds of fun stuff about abundance activations, and magnetism, and um, just developing something that feels really amazing. You know, a vehicle to share your soul service that feels incredible, that feels like you, that supports you, and that really supports the planet. <laughs> mm. Wow. Wonderful stuff. And yeah. oh, I'm excited. I'm just excited to share all of this with everyone. So I'll be sure to include the links to both of those um, and the write-ups in your speaker page. And um, so is there anything else that you want to leave the audience with before we end? <sighs> <laughs> you know, it's this question that it, it's so fun. I was writing about this um, recently and it, it just comes up, it comes up now like to remind ourselves, like maybe you play with this question throughout the day, like especially if anything ever feels stressful or tense or overwhelming, like what if everything is okay? It sounds so simple, right? But I, that comes in to, to share, like what if everything's okay? as it is right now, like, what's it like to really accept, come into acceptance of whatever's happening? And this is inviting us into presence too. What if everything's actually okay and there's nothing to fix, change, slow down? What if it's all okay? Take a breath, receive, hand on the heart, love you. What would feel beautiful to experience right now? You know, and there's just this like softness, you know, we're invited to really practice with ourselves, like reparenting ourselves, really connecting intimately with ourselves, communicating with ourselves as um, someone that we really love and hold in, in reverence. Yeah, mm. that's, what, that's what's coming through. <laughs> wow, beautiful. You know, when you, as soon as you said that, what if everything's okay? I felt my body just take a breath and just like relax. And, um, that's, that is where we get to hang out. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of fear being broadcast and just to hang out. What if, what if it is all absolutely as designed, there is a plan, there is order. It's all okay. And mm -hmm. we might not know what's next. What, what if it's all okay? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think that is the perfect note to end on. Um, thank you so much, Sydney. I've really enjoyed this conversation today. Me too. Such a pleasure. Thank you for creating this space. And I'm, I'm so thankful to connect with everybody here, all the energies and all the other speakers, everybody listening. I just feel this like, I see a picture of the earth and just all these like little light bulbs going off all around the planet and bringing more of ourselves in. Feels great. Yes, <laughs> indeed. And to everyone watching, we'd love for you to know that we are all on this journey together, ascending together. We are a community of light. And I so appreciate all of you. Have a beautiful day or evening. Namaste.